Hey, hello everybody. How are you? This is Judith Mancini and I'm welcoming you to Dishing with Judith. So let me introduce my spectacular guest today. This is Dr. Theo Cusoli. Yeah, wow, you did a good job. That's a home run. Is that Judith, okay? that's a home run right there. You didn't mess up. You didn't call me. Kowalski. I am the luckiest girl alive. Yeah. I get the most interesting men when I interview men, and I get the handsome men. Oh, well, so this this is flattery really will get you everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to see us live, you can go to Theo's. Well, I'm on the Insta we're on the Instagram. Instagram. Now, what yeah. is your Instagram? Yeah, just the name, Dr. Kasuli. We're uh, going to yeah. be getting our video up in the next few weeks, but Great. right now you could go see us live on Instagram too. Yeah, we are as we are well, trending right now. Look at that. As we're well trending. as BeverlyHillsRadio.com. Yes. So, okay, so let me just read a little introduction for Dr. Theo. We call him Dr. Theo for short. Makes it easy. He's a leading mind-body holistic healer who is changing the landscape in his field. He is board certified, excuse me, certified doctor of chiropractic, and his specialty in that is the spinal. A hypnotherapist, a public speaker, and a best-selling book author. He now has eight books published. He offers radical life enhancement and transformation for those seeking top performances, personal power, and pain-free existence. We will be giving his website and all how to con contact him a little later in the show. But right now, let's introduce Dr. Theo. Yay! Hello, welcome. <laughs> Dr. Theo is here at Beverly Hills, too. I am. I am. I'm right down the street, actually, on Wilshire. So, oh, Wilshire. 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 <laughs> yeah, Wilshire. So many different ways. Dr. Theo has somewhat of an interesting background and yeah. in how he got into this field and how yeah. he loves to help people. So, give a little bit of your background and the major things that happened in your life. Well, that. <laughs> <laughs> Led you they're to here on the paper, others. but I do not need that uh, to uh, No, to you remember. don't need That's the paper. Sure. Well, semi-paralysis, you know, at a, at a young age. I also had um, bullying all the way through uh, grade school and uh, middle school. Uh, pretty much uh, wanted to end life early because all the kids were getting all their, their pain out on me. I was the easiest little, uh, brightest little light bulb available in the school. So Why bullying, were they picking on you? I was actually just the smallest guy. I was the oh, smallest. So late were... bloomer. I was a late bloomer. And okay. I also had a lot of um, um, ethnicity things. You know, I was Greek. Uh, I am Greek. And uh, growing up, my grandma would visit and knit me awesome, beautiful, bright neon orange sweaters. So, <laughs> you can... <laughs> you can <laughs> It didn't help. We Grandma, all had those grandmas, whether yeah. they had the funny reindeer on them or so, so bright I, colors. So I had a problem. What do I do? Do I do I piss off Grandma by not wearing her beautiful <laughs> no, bright neon not. orange and green? She picked as far as where know, was sort of this? Where were you growing it up? together uh, with the yarn there? Uh, this was New Jersey, East oh, Coast. Oh, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. So it was an easy target. I mean, it's not hard to pick on the guy with the uh, knitted orange and green were sweater. Were you born here in the United States? I was States, born here. Or, or, yes. Okay. Yeah, the, mother and did father your family both. Immigrate? Yeah, my mother and father both uh, Greece, Greek. Yeah. Okay. My father was part of the Merchant Marines. He sailed the world, and he said America is How it. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I he had, he had a pretty exciting. cool life. Merchant Marines don't get enough uh, credit for what they do because we still need Merchant Marines today. They're they're very vital in the yes. government. Yes. In, yes. In, in the uh, freedom movement. So then it says, how did you get this neck injury? That was semi paralysis in a pool accident. I was in I a was in Greece. Pool accident. Yeah, they were on my shoulders. So the guy was on my shoulders, and we were wrestling another two individuals. <sighs> and uh, the guy on my shoulders lost and took my head with him. Oh my gosh! You know we all Snap let our neck. kids do that. Yeah, that's not and that's we don't not think a good about thing. That. Don't let them do that. No, that is not a good thing. So I basically was in the pool. They put dragged me out because I was basically yelling and for my life. Uh, I felt like the tar searing paint, like the hot tar was flowing down my spine. Uh, my left arm started to not work. I got tingling and, and numbness in my chest, and my heart started feeling like it was slowing down. Yeah, I felt like I was dying. It was like a movie. It really it was, really sucked. <laughs> well. It wasn't fun. You became semi paralyzed. Yes, for two home, months. For two months. Yes. And did they have to operate to 
Well, or I went. Did it? I, for, I was in Greece. Still, they don't have. They didn't have chiropractors in Greece no. at that time, so it was difficult. Do for they me now? To, they do now. They do now. But this was a while ago. This was, uh, you know, dec- the two decades almost ago. So it was. Uh, the, it was just budding chiropractic, which is like a new thing, just like it was here in the seventies. Um, but uh, after that, I came back to the states. My father's like, oh, let's go. You know, take you to the medical doctor. They said MRI back then. MRIs were like about two thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars, so things were expensive. And my dad's like, you know, okay, just walk it off. Be a hard Spartan, because we're Spartans, right? We're <laughs> yes, Greeks. So we're right. Spartans. Like, walk it off. Walk it off. Walk it off. And, and I was like, can't do it. Practically paralyzed. Right. And, Basically, and you know, horrible tough pain. love. Tough love. That's real tough love. Yep. And uh, so I basically uh, went to a chiropractor last minute. And uh, he changed my life. I was in his office, and I felt like the power of God just go right through me with the adjustment. And I said, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. That's amazing. Yeah. And what a wonderful field to go in to help other people. At the time, my father thought, you know, it would it would disgrace him because chiropractors were, were basically you, not you as know, I know. powerful as they are now. I have always been interested in chiropractors all my life. And, of course, I was in the natural health supplement uh, business when I was publishing my health and nutrition magazine so I'm quite familiar with it yeah. and I totally believe in everything they they believe in there's the power holistic there. approach yeah. and mind and body what chiropractic can do is unbelievable it's amazing. and it's been hidden by the uh, yes, powers of base yeah, yes it's by been the hidden. AMA yes and and many other you know money-making factors I mean right if you, if everyone goes and becomes healthy, then what happens to the population? It starts to increase longer longer lives, happiness, you know, um, prosperity. But there's there are individuals who oh, don't gosh. want that happen. Who wants that? There's individuals <laughs> that don't want that happen. Okay, I have to ask you. Not too long after you had your injury, you had open heart surgery. Yes, then I had open heart surgery. What Lucky happened? me. You look so healthy. <laughs> You turned your life around, obviously. What happened with your open heart surgery? Well, uh, I was born with an aortic valve that didn't work correctly. My mother oh, actually okay. had a lot of anxiety when I was in utero, so uh, it was that was like a karmic thing, you know. I was like to learn about love. I was about to learn about the heart. I was about to learn about the connection between between the the supple soul and body. You know that that was my that was my my calling, and I fought it for a long time. I was a uh, uh, photographer, videographer. I went into the whole modeling, acting thing, and uh, for a long time, I was basically in the entertainment field. And uh, God knocked on my door a few times with that uh, semi paralysis and then the uh, heart surgery. And I had to find myself. I had to find my soul. And it was like, because what's going to happen if 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 I have to go through this? What's going to happen? And and the I started blacking out. That's how it happened. I started blacking out for no reason, just like you see on the uh, the movies. Where the, the it just you're living your life and then all of a sudden psh, everything goes dark. Wow, well, that scares me. I got a flutter just then. It's, it was scary. That's it was horrible. Scary. So I thought I was dying the first time in the pool. Then I thought I was dying here, and I actually literally was because when I went to the cardiologist, the cardiologist said your heart has blown up into like a like a balloon. Your heart is about to explode. You have eight months left to live. What? That's what he said. You have eight months oh left to God. live. I mean, this guy was cold. He was pretty cold. You have eight months left to live, and if we Just don't put change, put it right out there. Yeah. If we don't change this heart valve, you're dead. And you're you're going to internally bleed, and you will be dead within eight months. So I, at 28, could you imagine what goes through my mind at 28? I haven't done all the things in my life that I yes, wanted to do. Yes, I have a whole list that I haven't done. Yeah, that list got bigger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I went through the surgery, but then they said you have six months to a year to recuperate. And I said, you know, I got to get back to my life. And I was so, you know, when I was on the stretcher going in, I made a, I did a prayer. And I know you're a woman of faith. Yes. I, I had a, a moment where things got real. And they got real, real fast. And I said, you know what? I've been selfish with my life. I've been very egotistical. I've been very angry. And, um, and I really want to make amends. Because I don't know what's going to happen right now. I don't know if I'm going to meet you, meet my maker. I don't know if I'm going to go the other side. I don't know what was going to happen. So I was praying. And I said, if I come back, and I do want to come back, I said. I made that clear. Let your power shine through me. Allow me to be a vessel. That when people come to me for help, that they receive it. 
and that I'm able to glorify your grace. And with that, the anesthesiologist put the uh, the mask on me and I went to sleep. And I, my soul got the sleep it needed because I was I was a wreck. Oh, I can I was, just imagine. Twenty eight, and you think you're twenty eight. Oh, you think you're invincible? You think yes, you're invincible. you do. Until and I you did. Get I thought I was invincible. Knocked upside the head. I did. And told that. So it humbled me. It humbled me. So did they replace the valve? They replaced the valve. Actually, they had a hard time. To, they tried to repair my own valve first, and then they, they couldn't. So they went in, and they said, okay, we're going to put in the cow valve. You're going to moo every now and then, but that's okay. Moo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then it says yeah. you had a second one at the age of 39. You don't yeah. look like you're even 39 now. You look thank very you. young. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I do the things that I preach. I take care of myself the best. The number one thing I do is I'm happy. You know, after you've been through two heart surgeries, and the second one was more, more it was tougher than the first. What and I happened recuperated. to the second one that something was wrong with the valve? The valve actually deteriorates after a certain time. It oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. You have two chan You have two choices. You can take a metal valve that you don't have to have another surgery, but you have cumulative in the rest of your life. You have to check your blood every every so often, every day. It's like a death sentence almost. Cumulative is really strong. It's strong. Yes. It's strong. Or you can have a, a cow's valve that deteriorates over time, and then eventually you're going to have to go in and replace it, which is what happened to me uh, two years ago. So now I have a new valve in me pumping. So, but I have to take it easy. You have to do lifestyle changes and all that stuff. So, depending on your doctor, it will depend wow. on what you're, where you go, which way you go. Wow. So, uh, what I have to say is happy birthday. Oh, uh, thank you today. so much. What a what a fitting conversation. It's right Dr. Now. Theo's birthday today. It is. But I also want to say happy birthday because you've been reborn several times. Yes. Yes. And, and happy birthday to you. Thank May you. 31st with both May Gemini's. May 31st with Gemini's and boy. Man, we're do busy you know Gemini's. It? Yes, we are. Yeah. We do have dual personalities because we both do so much. And th and happy birthday to all my other Gemini friends because yes, I have tons to of Gemini's. Too. Yes, and we love you. Uh, I mean, there's a whole list. Absolutely. What You want to name them? <laughs> uh, where do I start? I... We might leave somebody out, so we're not going to do that. We don't want to hurt anybody. They know story. who they are. Let's talk about some of your books. Last night, I read... The master, be a master of success. For those of you looking on Instagram, I made some markings in the book because these, there are eight books coming out now. They are out, but there's eight books in the collection and more to come. And seminars are on their way. People are asking about the seminars. They are on their way. There's a lot to consider when putting them together. Seminars. Seminars. We're going to be teaching people how to master their lives and also get in touch with their, with their innate self. Uh, whether it be healing or, or basically connecting to your guides or or uh, meditation. Et Wait, where are these seminars going? They to be? will be all over the place. I might have to come. Yeah, of course. Do they some interviewing the down there. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to be all over the country. Uh, eventually, they will. We're going to start here in Los Angeles, and we're going to move it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, let's talk about be a master of success. There's 33 master secrets to achieving your dreams. Yes, this book was basically. Uh, the notes that I've made throughout my life that helped me uh, conquer difficulties. And these are exactly what I, I share with uh, my patients and also those that I teach and mentor to help them in their entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. And uh, there are 33 things that if you put them into your life, 33 tips, they will change the way you do things to bring you results. And I'm all about results, whether it be in the office, whether it be training, personal training, seminar, I'm all about results because I am living what I preach. And uh, very, and very few times. this is the first book in your series. This one was actually the fourth one in my series. Oh, my goodness, because yeah. it's a wonderful one to start with. Oh, yes. I mean, that one, Be a Master of Self-Love, is also, we'll talk about that in a yes, second. But but these are very, yeah, very much inviting to the eye. They're easy to read. They have a lot of knowledge in them, and it's something that I subscribe to also in all of these steps that he's taken. So you really do want to order one of these books or all of the books, and they're available on uh, Amazon. Amazon. DrKasuli.com, and um, yes, and Barnes & Noble. Spell Kasuli for everybody oh. so they can get to your website. K-O-U-S-O-U-L-I, Kasuli. It's, uh, it's, it's like couscous, couscous with Bruce Lee in it. 
Couscous, just think of Bruce Lee eating couscous, and I think you got it. Kusuli. <laughs> That's but, great. I like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of soul in it, too. S-O-U-L there. So, I want to discuss this. Yes. Do not believe... I love your bookmarks, by the way. Oh, yeah, you well, really did your research. I, I'm I impressed. I really did. Some people have me on, and they're like, okay, let's take a look. But they, they don't no, do the no, research. Like you do the research. The yeah. that I review and yes. talk to the authors. So, you do not believe in luck. Instead, believe in God, his laws of the universe, and your ability to take action. Oh, my God. I Did think, I write that? Holy yes, you moly. wrote that, and I think that's really good advice. Thank you. I, I, I believe in that because you have to take action. See, free will is bestowed upon us, but what we do with that free will is important. Uh, that you put into perspective the goals, the intention, the ideas, the love for what you do, the passion, all of that is together. You know, see, those are God-given rights. Yes. A gifts. They're God-given gifts. gifts. And it's your right to take action. So once you take action, you put forward your God force and you make things happen. I mean, think about the radio show that you're, you're making right now. At some point, you had to take action. It was a thought first. Then it was like, I can really do this. And then you said, how do I do it? And then God sent the right people, your staff, your the, the building, etc., the room, and the guests to yes, do it. Yes, absolutely. And actually, when we started this new venture, we said a little prayer to have God's blessings okay. for our new venture because we have changed studios. So this is BeverlyHillsRadio.com, and we have God's blessing, I know. Yeah. So you know and go forward with that knowledge, and that's the power. So how large or how big of an enterprise you take it will depend on your ability to stay on that frequency. So you go on to talk in Chapter 7 again, recognize the divine in and around you. Yes, I important. think that's very important. If you recognize the divine around you, then you can be uh, connected to what it is that's running everything. And then when you see that, you see the power in everything. Because if you can be connected to the very breath that you're taking right now, just the breath, where's that coming from? It's amazing. It is amazing. It? And then you, you, how can you not value yourself if you think about that and say, you know what, there's no Energizer Bunny running me right now. The amazing thing to me is I often tell people if they can't sleep at night or they wake up and they're depressed and they don't know how they're going to get through the day and all, I say, Remember the old song, Count Your Blessings, instead of sheep. Mm -hmm. And every day I get up and I thank God for my blessings. And I start out by thanking Him for my sight and my hearing and my well-being and the birds and the Beautiful. bees. Because people tend to forget the divine around them, and that is the divine. That's correct. That's correct. Every cell in your body is singing. That's right. Divine It's hymns. not all about making money. See, making it, here we go, we're going into that part of the book right now, where I, I discuss that, you know, success is like an iceberg. You know, you only see at the top what people, what people see is the iceberg itself. But underneath it, you have all the things that that person has done that don't get recognized to become successful. Uh, success is often like that, where people look at only the money being made, and that's like years down the, down the line. It's not immediate. You put a lot of sweat equity into into becoming a successful That's entrepreneur. That's right. It takes hard work. You can't oh, yeah. just suddenly say, I want to be an entrepreneur and be successful and launch yeah. a website and think everybody's going to come to you. Like lots of these Instagram success people tend to make people, others believe. Uh, <laughs> it's not like that at all. You need yeah. time. You need a passion. You need... You're not going to make six figures in one week or two weeks. You may, but how can you sustain that? Well, you can, probably can't sustain it, but that would be a real gift from God, too. That's true. But you better follow That's his true. path he's chosen for you, or you might not keep making the money. I find the people that have some kind of uh, faith in the outside of, the, of themselves, when they get weak, they're able to pick up themselves a lot quicker. Uh, yes, I think so, too. But we're both Christians, and we're speaking about the God that we worship. But there are other people who worship spirituality could include Buddha mm -hmm. uh, meditation just a higher being I think spirituality in your life is very very important it's vital because especially who do you these talk times. to in the dark times 
as well as the good times. Your head never stops talking. We have it goes on. an army of angels at our beck and call. That's right. If you know how to beck and call. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You gotta know how to beck and call. Not yell, and scream, and plead, and and, and grovel. No, that no, no, no. You have to give back. <laughs> you have to be productive in your That's in right. your give and take. That's right. So also you say uh, you will never go wrong investing in yourself. And I think this is so important. This goes kind of leads into your other book. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else in this book you want to discuss? I think investing in yourself. Let's talk about that for a minute because it's a whole lot of interesting things about investing in yourself and also how you need collaboration with others. You can't do everything yourself or by yourself. Right. So let's talk about that for a bit. Micromanaging is probably one of the one of the largest setbacks for people uh, sure. in their business. Uh, you have to delegate. You have to become a leader. You have to uh, say, "Hey, this is what I like you to do. Please do this." Not hire people. Um, open up your your networking. No, number one thing for me was networking. I didn't want to network. I was like, "I can do it myself. Why am I going to network?" So do you network? I do. I network now. I you mean, go to network groups. I do network groups. Uh, the great, I do meet up. Uh, there's many different different ones. The art uh, of ne active networking by uh, Mark Sackett is a great one. Uh, plug for for Mark. He's he's a great individual, and he goes out and he actually helps people in San Francisco, Los Angeles, anywhere. If you can look it up, just uh, the art of active networking. Very and good. I am a member of E Women, one okay. of the largest women's networking group with Sandra Yancey as the founder. That's excellent, yes. yes. So you can impact a lot of lives when you network. And one of the parts of being successful is obviously not only knowing a lot of people, but connecting people and helping them find other people as well, changing their lives through connect. Being a connected person is, is one of the most sought after things. And why not do that for yourself and your business? Become a connector. Absolutely. Yeah. But don't go to a networking group and think that you're just going to get referrals or collect business yeah. cards because you have to share and give back also. And yeah, that's true. It's always nice to ask what you can do for the other person that of you're course. meeting. Yeah, I, I look at it like this: how can I how can I impact as many people in that room in any way I can? And when you do that, it's amazing what God does, it right? Is. It's amazing. He sends you like all the people that are right for your business, and that you're right for them. That's the very number true. one number one connector. That is the dad, true. the father. That's right. Yeah. So let's move on to your other book that I admit I did not have enough time to read it last night. You just got that one. Everything going on. I just got this one and I haven't had a chance to read it. So this is Be a Master of Self Love and thirty three more master secrets mm -hmm. of loving your extraordinary life. Why thirty three? That's this. the master number right there. Thirty three is Master Magic number, number yes. a master number. You want to explain what thirty-three is? Well, thirty-three is the 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 years that uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was on the on the planet, and uh, and lived his life in a way that shows us how we should live ours. Uh, I know he only had three years to to do his his preaching, and uh, for thirty years he accumulated knowledge, wisdom, and connections to his higher. I mean, it took him thirty years. To come to the to the point where he said, you know what, this land needs some help, and then boom, did what he did. To learn and study. Yes, to learn and study. And uh, being a master is about that, learning and studying your life and your connection to where you came from. So be a master of self-love. There's a cover if anybody, I, I've been talking about this book uh, for the last few weeks because it's one of the biggest ones that people really gravitate to in the in a society right now that everyone is lost it seems they don't know how to love anybody i heard a news anchor uh, last night say this is such a wonderful time to be alive in america yes. and i agree it is because we're making vast changes uh socially and economically and all but for many it's a struggle it's a struggle all over the world we have terrible terrorism and economic problems in many of the countries in the, the uh, European Union. So uh, I think it's very important to love yourself. You want to explain to people what oh, self-love yes. is? This oh, isn't yes. necessarily 
a sex book, people. This is loving yourself in your yeah. heart. Don't get your mind in the gutter, there, to, people. Yeah, don't. We don't want you to get confused. Now, if you want, if you want something on sex, I wrote a book named "Be a Master of Sex Energy." Right. And that's not a sex book. That's, it's actually well, it's about sex and energy. It's about using your your energy as a female or male in a very powerful way to, to get the spouse that you want in a positive way. way. Yes. You know, that's, I don't write anything for, you, you can take anything and make it negative. You can take anything and make it negative, but let's make it positive. There's enough negative out there. That's right. So the, be a master of self-love, how to love yourself. How, how to invest in yourself. Nobody, how do you nobody invest tells you in that. yourself and have self-love? You invest in yourself by looking in the mirror and saying thank you. That's the first step. Look in the mirror and say thank you. And who are you thanking? You're thanking your creator. You're thanking your spirit and your soul. You're thanking your body for taking you from point A to point B. You're thanking your, your ability to see, your ability to hear, your ability to speak and become uh, a, a voice for your expression. You're, you're opening up to who you are and who you value you are. That starts the first thing. Like you said, you put your feet on the ground. When you, when you, when you get up, you put your feet on the ground. And you say, wow, I have another day to create. That's what I do. I mean, I've been through semi-paralysis, bullying, uh, two heart surgeries, you know, two foot surgeries as well. I've had two foot surgeries. Wow. So when I wake up, these feet hit the ground. I say, thank you. One more day to create and have fun and enjoy myself. You know, people often ask me, because I've gone through some difficult times in my life too, as we all have. Um, we have challenges in life. But I've been a pretty happy person all my life, even with the challenges. And they ask how you can be happy all the time. Well, I just am a happy person because mm -hmm. God has granted me the time on earth to be with people I love and get the negative people out of your life. That's correct. Actually, it's one of the points in the book is how to identify and remove the people in your life that are not causing you at any service to your your empowerment and it's important that you're not one of those people too because it was like oh you know everyone just brags about oh today I'm not going all negativity could be gone you know or they, they talk about all that you know but what if you are the source of the negativity how do you how do you clean up that act and it's also in the book as well and uh, forgiveness of self is where I believe I begin everything forgiveness of self I think that's very important yeah I think it's important to ask God's forgiveness because you've fallen off your path that he has given you and forgive yeah. yourself. If God can, can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. Always forgive. And move on. He's always forgiving. No matter what you've done, always forgiving. Always That's have right. another chance. You, you know, you're going to you're going to fall short of the perfection of God. I mean, there's nobody going to be as perfect as God. Because that's that's where we all came from, so we always attain to that. I think attain. it's very interesting because I don't really do uh shows on faith oh faith and, and health are it's very, very interesting because as soon as we saw each other in the elevator and i welcomed him we immediately had this bonding over our faith right well i gave you a big hug told That's you right. I, I was a hugger and, so and, I, I. and i and i saw your cross and i said yeah she's a woman of the faith and uh we not only if you didn't have a cross i'd still hug you <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> yeah because because we're all brothers and sisters on on this on this planet and uh you you want to you want to help and i think christianity is a very big part of helping people the real christianity i mean you know all these denominations and i think it should just be christian there's there's only one just just well, be christian I, I do too i mean you're yeah. welcome to go and worship the way you want yeah. um but it, we have to remember that there should not be infighting between the yeah. religions. Okay, so let's move on. Let's talk about some more things. When you're investing in yourself, what are some of the things that you think people should invest in, in themselves? Definitely take a day of the week where you're not working and you're serving, you're serving your higher power and you're also serving yourself. One day. Yes, it is not good to work 24-7. That's, that's How it that's got correct. to be like this was the boom of the Internet and uh, technology. 
and it was kind of a point of pride to sleep under your desk for 10 minutes and get up and keep working. But to me, I find that very non-productive. Well, it, well, from a doctor's perspective, it's very unproductive. At, in a certain, at a certain point, you're going to basically you know, fall asleep. You're not going to be as productive at work. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be lethargic. You're going to be just an uh, unhappy individual. Your brain's not going to be working yes. at optimum levels. Your joy levels will go down. So you do need to recharge the body and take care of your body. And if you're not doing that, obviously, it's going you know, to catch up to you. Now, in your practice, your chiropractic practice, do you uh, have a certain method that you use to tell people to increase the self-love and the joy in their life? I do. And uh, the method that I practice is the Kasuli method because it's everything I've gone through in my life and what I've learned and how I've learned it. So when they hire me to become their um, coach, their teacher, their doctor, and they all, they're all the same thing, basically. I take on the responsibility of, of helping them and guiding them in the best way I know how into food, nutrition, uh, exercise, uh, living their life, just, just day-to-day thought processes that go in that may be negative. We reprogram all that. We reprogram that and we, we set them, we set their neurology straight. What a diet do you prescribe for? I don't mean a weight loss diet. Mm-hmm. What like a Mediterranean diet? Well, some people want to lose weight, so there's different things for that. Uh, Mediterranean, not for everybody. Uh, it's mostly the healthiest one is the Mediterranean diet. We have the equal amounts of fats and, and oils, and and uh, the sugars are low, and it's very green. You know, and the you know, Greeks, Greeks know in the, the island of Icaria, everyone pretty much, they did a study on this in Blue Zones. And they said that everybody here is like 90 or above. What is, what I is know, the service? It's amazing. It's amazing. Because it, but they, they, they don't have healthy. stress, it's though. That's a big is, one. Food is the medicine. Food and no stress or very well, little no stress. Well, no stress, too. Maybe yeah. we should move there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It's at some one point. place I haven't been. I have not been to Greece. Oh. I know. You're not going to want to come back. I. That's what I'm afraid of. It, they won't let me go. <laughs> no, you're going you're gonna to say, no, this isn't my new home. You're going to love it. It's beautiful. That's a thought. I recommend. That's a thought. Maybe I'll move there. Definitely. <laughs> okay, so what about exercise? Exercise is different from all, for all people, as is diet. Uh, I do believe in listening to your body, listening to who you are, feel at, or how you feel. Your body does talk to you. You have a body, energy body. You have a different energy body. So we have the emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical body. Uh, so we have the aura, which is a energy that uh, in meditation, meditation and uh, esoteric works you see the, the whole aura and the blending of all the energies uh, some people like myself can see the actual aura can you see an aura I can me? I and can depending on the light should we share it with everyone well I talk about that actually in my other book be a master of psychic energy you actually learn how to see the things you knew as a kid that were were real I mean you were only told that it's not real because enough parents that uh, lost their ability to see started telling you not to believe in the way that you were seeing and you were believing. So, that, you know, Christ even says, have a childlike energy, right? That's this right. This is the kingdom. The kingdom is bestowed to these children. Let them come to me. Uh, he said he's, it's, in, it's in there, in the Bible. So, likewise, we should have that energy, that, um, that ability to connect to our maker through that childlike, not childish, but childlike Energy. There's and a big difference between childish and right. childlike. Right. A child, when they are born and they're two or three years old, are they're so beautiful. full of joy. And, and light and light love. And, yes. yes. They're beautiful. And, and it reminds us when we see a, a beautiful, whether it be a kitten or a puppy. or That's right. Yeah, it reminds us of where we came from. And that's why we're just like, oh, we melt. Because but you we didn't remember. answer my question. What's that? Tell me about my aura. Oh, your aura. Well, what do you want to know about it? I, what do you Other see? Other than it's glowing. It, oh, good. Other than <laughs> it's glowing. See, many people always ask me that question as soon as they say, oh, you can see auras. I can see them under certain cir- circumstances and situations. Uh, if there's too much of that light over here, no, can't yeah. see as much. When it's subdued, you can see it's subtle. It's very subtle, and it's the energy that we give off of our body. Living things all have auras. Plants, animals, people. So it, it depends. Uh, in the office, I have a machine that actually does the aura work for me, and I have I just 
allow the patient to see it and the patient sees it to get a report and all that stuff about what it all means, all the different colors. Also, I do explain that in Be a Master of Psychic Energy. That's a big, thick book. It's almost 400 pages. Well, in that, I, well, I'll have to read that too. That's a, yeah. Okay, now the other thing you do is hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is vital in the work that I do because it's either waking or it's either traditional sleeping or what do we say, half asleep. Because you don't really go fully asleep, that's, that would be sleeping. Uh, hypnosis comes from the Greek word hypno, which means sleep. Gnosis, a state of. So you're not fully asleep. You're just half halfway awake, halfway in the other world, halfway here. And uh, hypnosis, whether they be in a meditative state on my table or they're basically full on under, uh, I use hypnosis to get to the subconscious and to rewire uh, habits, uh, thoughts, feelings, moods, whatever it may be that they need help with. So you're on a chiropractic table yes. when you're doing yes. hypnosis? Yeah, we just need a table. And do you table. do adjustments at the same time you're doing hypnotherapy? Yeah, I've termed the word hypnochiro, which is a new technique that I have uh, uh, pioneered, which is basically how to, it, obviously, how, how to use the hypnosis with the chiropractic. And it's different for all people. And uh, it is proprietary information, so it's um, it's very tailored to the person on their during their session. It's so not it's a how one, many one shot do thing you think? For yes, how many sessions would you suggest somebody have to get rid of something from, say, their childhood that was a traumatic experience? That's great question. Keeping it, them from moving forward it takes, to success. It takes different. Uh, aspects of what's going on in their life at this moment to see how we can reflect to that moment where it started. So let's just say someone is uh, 90. It will be different than someone who's 9. Of course, yeah. yes. We have sure. a lot more years. We have a lot more in training of the nervous system. We have a lot Gosh, more it things. It take me a long time then. Okay. <laughs> kids, kids are really quick. Uh, teenagers, fairly quick. But it depends on what stage. Again, are they being bullied? Are they? Is it? Is it something that's going on constantly? Is it something that happens once in a while? Is it one traumatic event? Like, for instance, I had one patient who had... Um, a very big fear about their their uh, elbows and their knees being touched. And uh, they couldn't get intimate because as soon as you touch those areas, they would freak out. And nobody knew what it was. So then we, at the, one of the sessions, we were working together, and lo and behold, we come to the moment where she was watching uh, Freddy Krueger, oh. who as a child, cutting off and dismembering his victims oh my at the gosh. knees and at the elbows. And that so traumatized, that her, traumatized forever. her forever. So then once we worked on that, she was able to, to not be so <sighs> so worried about wow, that. Wow, that is really something. Yeah, the, when you watch to scary movies. Scary movies, I have you. never liked them myself, but I don't understand these scream fests that people have and watch these movies. And, mm. and now I have a reason to because she was so traumatized it followed her into adulthood. That's exactly right. What happens is is they fall in love with the fear. They fall in love with the fear, and fear is very big in their life. And mm. you see, you see that connection is very uh, distracting to prosperity sometimes, or most of the times. Well, let's move on from the dark <laughs> here. Uh, you say plant positive sayings all over your house. Right. I love that. It's little post-it notes I write to myself. Um, you are full of joy. You can do anything. Life is abundant, and so are you. All these different things. And I post them all over the place, uh, specifically over my mirror in the morning when I, walk, when I walk, wake up and I look over there and I walk over and I'm just like, wow, okay, yeah. And I, I don't have any chance for negativity to enter my mind. Any chance that you get to remove negativity from entering your mind is a chance at a great day. You're so right. Now, I think it's interesting, also in the self-love book, you have a chapter, um, chapter 9, that talks about relationships, and I really like this. My favorite Pull subject. Pull the weeds and grow the flowers. That's right. I love that saying. You have to keep primping your garden. Uh, you there have are, some great quotes in here, and you wrote that one. I like that. There are so many different aspects of friendship that we can talk about whether it be a romantic love or whether it be somebody who is in your day, day-to-day -day, um, happenings that need to be cultivated. Now, let's just say somebody comes to you and says, you know, I really like your shoes, okay? All right, let's think about this. 
do they like your shoes because they don't have the shoes and they wish they, they wish that to covet your shoes? Or are they saying it because you look good in the shoes? Or are they did you say being sarcastic? Or are they being sarcastic? <laughs> There's there's many different ways to feel. One, you're going to feel the vibe. The vibe will tell you what's going on. That's your ch chakras in your soul. You're picking that up. So there's many different ways. Now, that relationship, if that person is being very true to you and being loving, you cultivate that relationship. If the person you feel is being uh, coveting or is jealous of you having those shoes, you, you kind of put some distance between that. And... Who wants to have a bunch of fake friends? A lot of people. That's the answer. A well, lot of people. Unfortunately, sometimes you don't realize it at first. Yes. And then you do realize that your friends are not your friends. Right. And I it's think a that sad comes realization. with maturity. It's sad when you realize it. After you get it. out of high school and college, because there's that mean girl syndrome and the bullying and mm -hmm. and all. So. Well, bullies are just victims themselves. Yes, you know? they are. They're most big of the victims. Time. And they take out all that on other people. Right. They make victims make some more victims. And that's where I'm very passionate about stopping bullying yep, and so talking to kids. Because it's like a virus. It's a mind virus that continues throughout our generations. Racism, hate, all that stuff is, is taught. It's not learned. We, I mean, like, it's taught to be learned. Yes, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. We only have a few minutes left. Can you explain the four R? Kusuli method intervention system briefly without giving away all your <laughs> secrets. Well, the Kusuli method is basically four four parts to it. One, we remove the things that are not supposed to be in your body in your life. We remove those through many different aspects. Uh, so secondly, we reconnect your nervous system. The number one thing that actually can, controls everything. Without your nervous system, your heart doesn't beat, you can't dance, you can't speak, you can't be anything. The nervous system is the king and everything else is its subject. So after you remove the things that aren't in your body, then you reconnect the nervous system, we rebuild the body and the system that you're actually working with, which is, uh, that's where exercise comes in, that's where scar tissue removal comes in, that's where hydrating and nourishing food-wise, everything comes in. And lastly, but not least for sure, is the resetting of the mind, and resetting of the, um, the connection to how you live your life and your conscious decisions that you make through a subconscious uh, paradigm. So those four different uh, steps are vital and uh, key in the Kasuli method. Now we have the eight books, and you can get those where? Uh, at my website, drkasuli.com, D-R-K-O-U-S-O-U-L-I.com, or through Amazon or any major retailer. And how, there are eight books. Can you say the titles of all of them? Sure. The first one is Be a Master of Maximum Healing, where how to heal yourself and basically how I healed myself after being through surgery twice <laughs> and right. semi paralysis. And uh, everything uh, that describes 60 different American ailments that uh, the public is, is hurting with here in, in today's life, making it difficult and struggle, everything from diabetes to to fibromyalgia, et cetera, how to naturally, holistically heal these, these ailments. The second book is Be a Master of Psychic Energy, helping you get more connected to your intuitive self and your uh, sixth, sixth, uh, sixth, third eye, your sixth sense. So uh, Be a Master, the third book, Be a Master of Self-Love, is actually this book right here, which is Loving Yourself Unconditionally. Be a Master of... Uh, success, the other book, how to successfully be a very powerful and strong entrepreneur, the basics. Be a master of your reality using, <laughs> there's just so many books. There's so many books, you <laughs> have to get Be a master of your reality. What a, what a brilliant thing, be a master, be a master. Be a master. Which is trademark, that, so don't go out and yeah, try to write your own book. That's my trademark, is be a master. It's really wonderful. Of all these different topics, be a master of self-image, how to lose weight naturally without having any, any uh, difficulties through the fad diets. Be a master of your reality, opening up your life with vision boards and how to do that. Be a master of channeling spirit, how to connect to your guides and, and teaching masters. And there's just too much. Just go to beamaster.com. <laughs> <laughs> beamaster.com. But you can, you can change master your life. That, be you a master that, beamaster.com. Yes. So that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming and visiting with us mm -hmm. today. I really appreciate it. 
There is so much information you have to share with everyone and how you transform their lives and all. And we're sort of both in the same coaching, yes. mentoring. Take care of yourself. Read these books and talk to many, many people because everybody has a different way of doing it and you can always learn. Mentors and coaches have mentors and coaches themselves. This is true. So don't be afraid of doing that. Take that step forward. Thank you for visiting with us today. We will have you back. And I want to thank all of you for joining us on Dishing with Judith today. And remember, you can follow us on Facebook at Dishing with Judith. And you can find us on all social media at Dish with Judith. But be aware, we're changing the format on everything. Don't forget BeverlyHillsRadio.com. You can tune in anytime and hear our wonderful shows. Dishingwithjudith.com. And I leave you with these words. Cherish yesterday, dream tomorrow, and live today. <laughs>